I know it's the Dragon Dagger. Saba's not done yet. We're making a white Power Ranger helmet. I'm excited, you should be excited. Roll the intro. A big thank you to Bespoke Post for sponsoring a portion of today's video, but more on that later. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank, and if you have one of these Dragon Daggers, you know how tricky it is to play that first bit manually to get the second part to play automatically, so uh, I'm actually happy I got that to work. No, don't ask how many takes that took either. So, me and Power Ranger fan, and me and want to make Power Ranger helmet. I've wanted to make one for quite a while. I've actually gone as far as printing two different helmets, a Lord Draken helmet and then a white Rhino Power Ranger helmet. I just never finished them. Heck, I even have a Sword of Darkness sitting on on the wall that again I just haven't finished. But here we are full steam ahead, we're finally gonna make our very own Power Rangers helmet. Throughout this video we're gonna discuss the 3D files I used, how I printed it, the sanding, the painting, and all the little things that go into it at the end, especially how to make the visor so you know you can see through it. And the really funny odd catalyst to all of this just happened to be me browsing Etsy one day. Just sitting there my recommendations was this gorgeous white Power Ranger concept helmet and it obviously it's the original white Ranger helmet but it looked sleeker and I just I didn't know why. After a little bit of research, I was able to stumble across this. Now, it's a custom concept design by an artist named Carlos de Tolli, and this is beautiful. I, I love this suit. This thing is gorgeous, and I absolutely want to make this full suit one day. So maybe stay tuned for that, because dang. The 3D model itself is by RA Product 3D. It is a little bit of a pricier 3D model. Um, helmets for 40 bucks, eh, a little high but it is a very good quality file, so I think worth it. So we've got the file, now it's time to make sure this thing's actually gonna fit me by breaking out the old 3D head scan. Well, not this, but shut up. So we're just gonna spend a little bit of time moving this around in Mesh Mixer and seeing if this helmet's gonna fit. And uh, spoiler alert, it, it's scaled pretty properly already. I'm not gonna adjust this at all. Obviously my nose wants to come out the front just a little, but that can get squished down. I'm not too worried about that. Um, I, I'm gonna try to print this. I think the scaling on this looks great. My head will be able to fit in it. Uh, it won't be squeezing my brain too hard. So we're just gonna go with the 100% scale model. So not everybody has a nice 3D scan of their head. I totally get that. It's convenient to have, but not for everybody. If you guys want a really good tutorial on how to scale helmets and get that nice perfect fit, go check out this video right here. I will teach you a bunch of different methods on scaling 3D printed helmets to fit you. So here's the helmet itself, just sitting here in Cura, and we're gonna tilt it back this is gonna be a little bit of a tricky print. Um, you could print it upside down, I don't recommend that because of all that detail, but I'm gonna to try to flatten it down something like that, maybe tilt it forward a little bit more. My biggest concern is this little widow's peak eyebrow thing. Because this is gonna be printing in mid-air, I need to make sure this part is supported. It can't, a printer can't just print in mid-air. Um, you can have some pretty crazy overhangs, that's fine, but you wanna make sure that this is supported. So we're probably looking at something like this and we're gonna to wanna to pay attention to these little spikes down here. But for this peak already, I know I'm gonna go and add a bunch of custom supports to help keep this stable. Is it a little excessive with the extra supports? Yeah, probably, but I want this print to survive. So using a little extra material, I, I think that's worth it. As for my settings, I'm gonna actually bump this up to a fine quality. I'm gonna do something like a 15% infill. It's a full helmet. It doesn't need to be that strong. Uh, the strength will come from the shape of the print itself. I really like my gyroid. And then I'm gonna adjust my temperature based on the uh, the filament I'm using, Sunlu PLA Plus. Uh, gray and black and it runs 215.65. Print speed, uh, I'm gonna bump this up to a 70 and we're gonna take it from there. If I can go a little bit faster maybe. The other thing is supports. Uh, support overhang angle, 65 easily. You don't need to do anything lower than that for a helmet like this. Support density, I'm gonna lower it to a five. This way the supports don't have a, as much material inside of them, it'll save material costs. And I'm gonna use a raft because I like using rafts. Fight me. And let's slice this and see what it looks like. Just kidding, one more thing I'm gonna do is throw a couple support blockers on the inside of the helmet. I do wanna support the very, very middle of it only because of the detail there, but I'm still gonna block out a good amount around it just by dropping these squares in there and I'm gonna basically make my own square. All right, so did I get a little trigger happy with the support blockers? Yes, and would I send this print? 
Uh, yes, because I've sent this print. This is exactly how I printed the other four helmets on my CR-10S Pro V2, printed two at the same time. Then I printed one on the Neptune 3 Plus, and then I printed one on the Ender 3 Max Neo. Uh, spoiler alert, the Max Neo took like five plus days, and uh, I was actually able to get this um, down a lot more than the three days it's doing now. I think I had it originally at like two and a half. You can obviously go around here, look at the supports more. I can block out all these little dinky ones that are sitting here. Try to chop down as much time as you can, but don't chop too much time. A lot of people chase that number. Oh, it's at 30 days, let's get it to two and, uh, 23 hours. You would much rather a print survive and you know actually succeed than risk trying to chop it down so much that you're teetering right on the edge and then it fails and you have to restart it anyway. So don't get too greedy with your material, but there's definitely uh, room for improvement here. Let's get this on the printer uh, where it's already been printed, but how about some cool time lapses of it uh, printing? Yeah, let's try that. Okay, so I'm approaching this build a little bit differently than normal. I have the helmet all done and off the printer, but instead of waiting until after it's painted and everything to go and do all the elastics and straps and buckles, however this helmet's gonna be held together, I actually already went and did that. I wanted this helmet to be easy to put on, so I have the back panel here, but not only does it have a little elastic strap, it's also magnetic, so I can take it apart to paint it or do any repairs or get into the helmet a little bit easier. And then the magnets just snap back on and then I can lock it back into place. Inside the helmet is just a mixture of EVA foam and I just cut little panels of it to help hold uh, the helmet on my head in a better orientation. I put some thin EVA foam around where my mouth goes um, so my nose and my chin isn't you know, rubbing on the plastic and it's a lot more comfortable. Initially, I was trying to use these little tabs right here as magnetic connectors. I uh, melted in some um, magnets into the back plate and I was gonna try to melt some opposing magnets into the helmet but I found out that just from the, uh, the tension of the magnets being on the plastic pushing it in it actually holds the back panel just fine it doesn't come off I might revisit this in the future with some velcro but for now I can take the helmet off put it on and everything lines up so now I'm happy with how the helmet fits. It's comfortable. Now it's time to go and paint it. And now I don't need to worry about coming back to this, doing any R&D on how the helmet's gonna fit. Can I wear it? How am I gonna attach the back panel? So yeah, this already came out as a super smooth quality print. I'm very excited to get a primer coat on this and just see how much cleanup work I need to do. All right, ow, where the, where the heck did this authentic Japanese Nada tool come from? Oh yeah, that's right, today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club that delivers top shelf goods from under the radar brands right to your door. It's free to sign up and they help introduce their members to cool new products. Outdoor gear, barware, kitchen and home goods, clothing and more. Each box of awesome has around a $70 value but you only pay a fraction of that price. 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. You'll get a box assigned to you each month based on the questionnaire you took when signing up. This way you get to preview what's in the box before it actually ships out and you can either keep it, change it, or skip that month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want and the box lineup changes every month. So for this sponsorship, they sent me three different boxes to test out. First up is probably my favorite out of the three. This is Slash and it comes with this awesome Japanese Nada tool. It's this absolutely beautiful full tang blade and this thing's gonna be great, especially with the bamboo I have in my backyard, pruning trees and just chopping up some kindling. I'm very excited to use this. Next up is Caprese and I know I'm butchering that word but it doesn't change what you get in the box. Believe it or not, I actually do like to cook and eat food. I kind of need it and being able to dress a salad with this is gonna be delicious. And finally, probably the riskiest, to my own health at least, is Scorch. I love hot sauce and hot things, and uh, this comes with six different bottles of hot sauce. Sauce, sauce, sauce? Sheesh, I know I'm from New Jersey, but what was that? Scorch comes with six different bottles of hot sauce in a really great variety of flavors, and I really wanna try one and try to finish this ad read, so let's see how that goes. And of course, we're gonna pick the hottest one based on Bespoke Post's own website, Peaches and Scream. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Bottoms up. Let that, let that stew for a minute or two. To get 20% off your first, 
To get 20% off your first box of awesome, click the link down in the description and enter Frankly Built 20 at checkout. Or just go to bespokepost.com slash Frankly Built 20. Thank you again, Bespoke Post, for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. And let's get back to the build. Okay, so the first step to this is sanding it down. I'm gonna do a quick run over this with 100 grit sandpaper and hit and knock down a lot of the high spots, but we're really gonna need to rely on our filler primer for this helmet because of all the recessed spots. We're just not gonna be able to sand in there as nicely as we would like. So making sure you're doing good, even coats of a filler primer. In this case, I'm using Duplicolor filler primer. This stuff is great and it lays down beautifully, but use whatever you have accessible to you and make sure you get a lot of good coats on there. Okay, this helmet's coming along pretty nicely. I did another few layers of primer on it and sanded it. Um, I'm gonna do one last coat of, uh, one last round of sanding to get rid of some of these layer lines that are still kind of bleeding through. But the front is looking pretty good. Um, I think it's almost ready for its first little bout of paint. Oh, this is, this is exciting. Once I was happy with how smooth the helmet was in the sanding and priming stages, I hit the entire helmet with a semi-gloss white by Krylon because I know this is very receptive to the tape I use and it's not gonna lift off when I peel the tape. And now for the worst part, the masking. This helmet's gonna go through a few different stages of masking. First up, I need to cover up all of the white spots that are gonna stay white through the whole build. But once I was happy with the masking, it was now time to put on a gloss black base coat. This is a base coat for the gold I'm gonna be using because a lot of metallics need a nice black base in order to shine through properly. And this Krylon gloss black really loves to run if you go on too heavy. So if you're using this specific product, take your time, build it up in layers and don't just douse it in one go. Now, if you aren't happy with how the gloss black comes out, you can still go backwards. There's nothing saying I need to take the tape off and redo the white if I'm not happy with the black. So I can go back and sand the black back down, do another few coats of primer, do the black again and kind of restart at this stage. So make sure your gloss black is nice and smooth and shiny and we can move on to the gold. Next up was more masking. There are parts of this helmet that stay gloss black. So I went back, covered those up with more tape. And now that all that's left is to apply the gold. I went over the black with some, I believe 500 grit sandpaper just to smooth it out just a little bit more and help that gold be even smoother. I actually ended up using a new gold for this. This is the 18K Krylon Metallic Gold, and I needed to test it beforehand because this stuff did not want to take a clear coat at first, but after a little bit of testing, I figured out a way to get a clear coat to adhere to it. It's a much different tint gold that I'm used to using, but I think it was perfect for this helmet. Just look at how smooth that was coming out. Seeing this come to life was so freaking cool. I am so happy with the results. And now probably the best part that makes masking oh so worth it, peeling the masking tape off. I was finally able to pull the uh, the tape that was covering the white and the black just to finally see how this helmet was turning out. Now, I don't know if there's a perfect time to remove masking tape when you're painting. Sometimes you wanna do it when the, uh, the paint is still a little fresh or tacky. Other times you wanna wait a few days before you remove it. And again, this comes down to testing and making sure you're practicing. And sometimes there's gonna be errors, so don't be deterred if you have a uh, an imperfect line or something gets a little messed up. And before the clear coat, the final part was doing the little chrome mouth. Um, I masked that off and hit it with some Krylon chrome. Here's a look at the helmet before I hit it with the 1K Duplicolor clear coat. And I really love how the gold was coming out, but that clear coat was gonna bring it to a whole new level. Unfortunately, the only footage I got of the clear coat was on my cell phone while it was still, you know, wet and tacky, but make sure you build it up in small layers, a few dust coats at first, and then you can do a nice thick wet coat on it. All right, so we're in the home stretch. We're back inside with the helmet and look how this cured up. Oh my God. I'm so happy with this, but now we need to do the visor and looking back at it, this is probably something I should have done when I was doing all the padding and foam on the inside, but I do have the template. It still fits. This is exactly what I'm gonna need to use to make the visor and for that, and I'm wearing gloves because I, I don't wanna mess the paint up. So let's put you right there. So we're gonna be using a combination of some clear plastic. This is a sheet of PETG plastic for my vacuum former. You can get the stuff on Amazon or at a hobby store really cheap. And standard window tint. I've used it on my Mandalorian helmets plenty of times. And the stuff works great. You can see through it. Look, you can see through it right there. But when your head, you know, head's in it, you can see through it just fine. So we're gonna be using this. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and tint this entire sheet because I wanna get a couple cuts out of this. If I take this template up to this, um, I might be able to get three or four different visors out of this. This way I can, you know, if I mess one up, I can go into the next one. So I'm gonna tint this whole sheet.
All right, one decently tinted piece of plastic. It's still a little opaque um, because there's protective film on the back. And so now I'm gonna lay the template down and try to get this thing to fit. It's gonna take some trial and error, but uh, I think I can do it. Okay, after riding the struggle bus a little bit, uh, I think I got it. It's a little dirty. I gotta clean it up and then the tint, uh, I still need to work some bubbles out, but I'm really happy with it. Um, I really had to take my time to use the template and a lot of fitting trial and error. And what's great about PETG or you know most plastics, I was able to take a heat gun and heat it up and let it kind of droop over the plastic. I was kind of uh, bending it over like my leg because you know, round leg and trying to just get it to hold that shape because if it's flat, it's gonna wanna pop out of the helmet a lot. So just getting it to have a little bit of a bend really will help keep it in there. And then at the very ends right here and here, I'm gonna use a little bit of Velcro because it's not in my line of sight a little bit of Velcro to hold it in. This way, if I ever wanna make the visor darker or lighter, I can pop it out. The same thing I do with my Mandalorian helmets, I can always take the visor out and repair it or change it out. Okay, so with the assistance of some Velcro taped behind tape, yeah, right? Um, so the Velcro is facing out and then I put a little piece of Velcro right on the edge there. So now the visor stays in and if I wanna pop it out, I can, um, but let's see how this looks. Here, we'll put the back on too. And I am very glad I did this. This makes working on this helmet so much easier. This little magnet clasp system. So I can get into the helmet easier. Hmm. Oh, I like that. Oh, you know what? You can kind of see through it. And I think I like that. Okay, so if I'm being honest, I like that you can kind of barely see my face through that. Um, if you guys have ever read the Boom Studio comics, like the, the, the comic Power Ranger, Power Ranger comics, you they put a lot of emphasis on being able to see through their helmets and visors, and that's not something you get in the show unless they have like a damaged visor or something. So I like we can kind of make out my eye and face through it. Now I can make the tint darker, I can make the tint lighter. Um, I think this is, I think this was 5% window tint, so it's already pretty dark. Um, but I love that. This came out. That is so cool. I was able to see it in the computer screen. But that's it. Like, that's it. It's, it's done. All right. Oh, squeezing my brain a little bit in there. So, guys, that's pretty much going to wrap up this video. I, I am so happy with how this came out. Like, this is definitely not my last Power Ranger helmet by a long shot. I am very excited to start finally making some of the helmets I've been wanting to get on my shelf for, like, years now. And the fact that you can just go and 3D print and build this stuff now is just... It's mind boggling. Imagine, imagine this 10, 15 years ago, or even longer when I was a kid. Oof, that hurt. Just being able to go and make this because you wanted. You can just go and build this stuff now. I, I think that's amazing. Now the helmet didn't come out perfect by any means. There are some imperfections in it. Um, I did rush in some spots and I probably should have gone and cleaned up some others, but overall I'm happy with it. And from a distance, I think it sells pretty good. The color scheme matches. But that was a really fun and quick build to document. I am trying to get better about getting that B-roll and taking you guys through the process and catching every step of the way. This way I can teach you guys more in the long run. But if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about something I didn't cover in the video or something I wasn't specific about enough in the video, please leave some comments down below. I read all of them and I try to respond to as many as possible. And maybe also let me know what Power Rangers helmets or items you might like to see me make on the channel. I am very much liking the Omega Rangers and the Death Rangers helmets from the comics. Uh, they're pretty cool. But if you like you saw in the video please consider subscribing to the channel it's super simple and quick to do but don't forget to ring the notification bell this way you stay up to date on all the videos and content i have coming out so as always thank you so much for watching you guys have a good day